My Journeys In the years between 1948 and 1952, I can count alone 34, made me see this country in a way I had never known it before. I discovered a spontaneous building genius, now almost smothered by technological and speculation construction, which through its uninhibited originality seemed often superior to European folk architecture. In search for an organic architecture for the living organism, I started to focus my attention on the basic houses and work buildings that had been constructed out of an intuitive comprehension of a specific need without the benefit of architectural theory. I discovered an astonishing number of examples in the Americas, which combined my father's classical ideal of form harmony and site response with the contemporary demand for functionality and adequate materials. My aim was to bring together as many interesting examples of early settler architecture with particular emphasis on the way they put their buildings in relationship to the landscape or to the site, the way they reacted to climate, native materials and skills, and the use of ornament and traditional elements they brought along. Even the simplest settler house in its own setting furnishes concrete answers to human aspirations that are common to mankind. It is evident to the senses representing a microcosmos of the totality of life. The best modern architecture, on the other hand, has the measure of its perfection outside the immediate reality of the building itself. There is a growing awareness that architecture is neither the sophisticated libertinism of the artist, who is responsible only to his own genius, nor the simple-minded mechanical objectivity of the slide rule, no matter how scientifically disguised. The variety of problems inherent today in the architectural task makes it more than ever a selective and coordinative function. It is a challenge of responsible choices with the ultimate aim of total coherence. A good vernacular structure, being eminently selective, coordinative, and coherent, is of similar architectural importance. To provide the home as an ideal standard is still the architect's first cause, no matter how great and rewarding are his other contributions to monumental and technological building. As those builders of old, the architect of today has to create an anonymous architecture for the anonymous men of the industrial age.